Talk North listeners, we have a deal for you through our friends at Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, and the Bite Squad app. Use the promo code FOOTBALL anytime between December 27th and January 2nd. Use the promo code FOOTBALL, uppercase, to get $5 off, off your food order of $20 or more. That's $5 off orders of $20 or more. Go to BiteSquad.com, the Bite Squad app. Use the promo code FOOTBALL. We appreciate everybody who has supported uh, our relationship with Bite Squad. We appreciate Bite Squad for sponsoring the programs. And here is the program. Welcome to Roy Smalley's Chin Music. Different kind of show this week. Roy is off. I have my interview with Derek Falvey, the Twins' chief baseball officer. Uh, just had some fun. Just pretty light stuff. Some some informative stuff, but you know we, we go in a lot of different directions. I appreciate him taking the time. I do want to thank BarryCoffee.com and Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin. Uh, Barry Coffee, you can uh, go to Kowalski's down there uh, by Lake Street and buy it off the shelf. You can call Barry Coffee. Go to BarryCoffee.com. Uh, buy equipment. You can, you, you've heard us talk about Barry Coffee many times on the show Check it out. Also, uh, we appreciate Tony Hoagland, State Farm Agent in Champlain. You can work with him via app, phone, email, whatever. Really easy stuff. Also, this week for Talk North listeners, uh, between December 27th and January 2nd, use the promo code FOOTBALL to get $5 off any order of $20 or more. $5 off any order of $20 or more. Use the promo code FOOTBALL uh, at BiteSquad.com or on the Bite Squad app. Thanks for listening. Here's Derek Falvey. Derek, I don't want to be really confrontational, but for God's sake, you're getting rid of my favorite people in baseball, Derek. Paul Molitor, Gene Glenn, Eddie Rodato, three of my favorites. Uh, this is completely unfair for me to start this way, but, my, you know, can we at least get them like visitor's passes? Can they just come by and, and chat with me in a dugout oh, once in a while? 100%. Uh, I would tell you that, you know, those guys, I have a ton of respect for each of those guys. Uh, on a number of different levels, um, Paul and I have remained in touch, you know, since the end of the season on a lot of fronts. And um, Eddie will still be a part of this organization. Certainly, I know Gino's got a lot of baseball history here in this state and in the location. These guys are, you know, they're part of the Twins family and otherwise. And there's been some change, certainly, and and uh, and, and we're excited about some of that change. But uh, we we certainly have a lot of tradition in this organization, and we'll, we we uh, we intend to continue to honor that moving forward. I was kind of teasing by starting with that. I hope you'll <laughs> forgive me. I will. Uh, this is Derek Falvey, obviously, uh, baseball boss of the Minnesota Twins. I'm Jim Suhan. This is our baseball show on TalkNorth.com. Giving Roy Smalley the week off. Uh, I know he's home resting, dealing with some things. Uh, so let's let's start with the personal before we get to the obvious baseball questions. Uh, you have a child coming yes. soon? Is yeah, that right? I do. Number yep. two? Yep, number two. Yep, okay, number early two. January, you think? Uh, early January or sooner, uh, according to the, the doctors. So maybe we won't make the first of the year. So. Do you name your kids after baseball figures? Uh, you know what? I My first, my son's name is, he's named after my two grandfathers. Oh, so okay, cool. his first and middle names are John Jeremiah. So he is, uh, that's my, those are my two grandfathers. This one will be a girl, so maybe not quite the baseball figure, but we'll, we'll see where it ends up. Uh, one thing Roy and I do on the show a lot is we, we, we talk about baseball, but then we always end up talking about music or culture or, you know, sure. pop culture, something else. And, you know, I was just sitting here talking, you were talking informally for a long time about, frankly, incredibly in-depth thinking, incredibly in-depth baseball management. Do you ever relax? Do you have hobbies? <laughs> Uh, that's a great question. My, I will tell you, my hobby primarily is my family. Um, I just, I, you know, I, I love the game of baseball. I think about it all the time. My wife will tell you I probably think about it too much, you know, and I, I, uh, I, I never really get away from it. I would say if I have a hobby, maybe it's uh, I like to cook or barbecue from time to time mm. at home and try out different recipes, and it's a good way for me to be at home. My, my son kind of likes it now too, so we do it together, and um, my, uh, you know, my wife, my wife will enjoy the the fruits of the labor at the back end of it, so she doesn't have to cook those days but you know I, I i have a hard time i'll admit turning it off um i'm with my family a lot i love golf i wish i could play more <laughs> i haven't played uh in quite some time but uh but I, I do love being around my family my wife gets mad at me when i'm on my phone too much whether it's work stuff or social media or checking on you know sports websites 
Uh, do you get the same thing? Yes, no yeah. question about it. No question about it. I uh, it, the blessing and the curse. I have one of those Apple watches, mm -hmm. right? So the benefit is I could at least put the phone down <laughs> at the other side of the room. And, uh, I'm not checking it all the time, but then there's the tap tap on my wrist, and I see an email or a text message. I think the reality of baseball, um, and this is you know, I, I'm not sure I'm necessarily proud of this <laughs> because I think we all do it, but it doesn't matter what time of year, what time of day, you may get a note or a message from another GM or an agent that something is speeding up that you need to be generally aware of and that could happen at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night in November just as easily as it could at 1 o'clock in July so uh, I think that's just reality of the game uh, but I, you know I do f try and find ways to really when I get home invest in in home and, and be there with my family and, and just for the purposes of this show are you going to sign Nelson Cruz during the show or right after <laughs> well uh, well we're, it's not going to be during the show okay. I don't think okay. I, it's hard to pick up any uh, any calls mid show well, you have your Apple watch on, <laughs> that's though. true you could do it you'd love that I, right I, I could pick up right here It'd be a great I, I story I will sit here and just watch it'll be <laughs> that's, fine that's fair uh, tell me about Wes Johnson uh, how you found him and for for listeners who aren't familiar, he's a new pitching coach uh, he is known for increasing velocity and being an expert on in mechanics but he was not in it with a big league franchise. How did you find him and, and how did you hire him? Yeah, so a great question. So Wes is somebody who, it's funny that the, the label for him, you know, out of the college space or just what's been written about him is around that velocity gain. And really that actually uh, goes back to when I did meet him. Uh, he was he was speaking at an event uh, in an off season at the Tech, Texas Baseball Ranch, and they do something that's called a coaches boot camp every every winter. And a number of college coaches usually go high school college coaches usually usually a couple hundred people. Uh, there have been some new events like that that have, have, have popped up since then. Uh, but I had gone down there, and, and this was back when Mickey Callaway and I, who were was now the manager of the Mets, was a was a pitching coordinator in the Cleveland system, and we went down there. And uh, we listened and observed uh, some other college coaches uh, who were talking. And then it wasn't just college coaches. It was guys like Brent Strom would present there. And he's a longtime major league pitching coach now with the Houston Astros. Uh, there were some strength and conditioning coaches who were there and otherwise. Anyway, Wes was talking at one of these events. And uh, we really came away impressed by what he was doing. He was using this track man system before really most of the major league teams were using it at Dallas Baptist University. He had Lou Forto. <laughs> right. He had bought a, he had bought a uh, portable system. And his idea was, listen, if I know better what pitches are doing with players, I'm probably going to have a better idea how to coach it and, and see, what, see what works well. And uh, he really did a good job. I mean, Dallas Baptist was not really on the map at that point in time. And, you know, a couple of years later, all of a sudden they're in the top five in the country and one of the best pitching staffs out there. And he had developed some arms. And I think that's where he got the reputation about velocity gain because guys did start throwing harder there. Um, they were better at uh, overall arm care. They were better with programming. So Wes and I maintained a relationship after those meetings over the years. He went on to Mississippi State, a uh, brief tenure there, kind of took them up from bottom of the SEC to the top, and then ended up at Arkansas, which is his home state. You know, it's one of those kind of chance dream jobs at that point for him uh, and had a chance to, to jump onto that. And they, you know, they're one pop-up away from winning the World Series last right. year. So uh, he's done a really nice job. And so what I really think about Wes uh, is what he does really well is he applies an understanding of, of overall mechanics, of how pitches work, of how a guy ticks, who really understands a lot of it. He's been coaching for you know, north of 25 years. I mean, he's a guy who's been around the game a long time. Uh, he understands how to work an individual guy's plan, and he can apply that, and he's, and he's demonstrated that historically. So he was somebody who I know was on the radar of a number of clubs over the last couple of seasons, and we got a chance to interview him and you know, really stood out. We're excited about what he can do. Do you remember what year you met him or heard him speak That's a great first? question. Or just a ballpark? Yeah, ballpark would have been probably, I don't know, 10 or 11, somewhere in that okay. range is, is my guess. Interesting. Um, right around that time. And tell me about the process with Rocco. Uh, you know, he, it was inter I found it interesting that by the time you guys held the press conference announcing he was, he was your manager, he seemed really comfortable and you guys seemed really comfortable with him. And it's not always that way. Sometimes sure. you can tell that pe these people really don't know each other and they want it to work, but they haven't. It felt, you guys felt like friends. Yeah, you know, I, I think maybe that's more uh, a testament to Rocco than anybody else. Rocco is, uh, as you get to know him, um, as, as and many in the market here will soon, uh, you know, he. It's such an easy conversation. You know, he, it, he is who you think he is, right? There's an authenticity to the way he approaches this. He's the first to raise his hand to say, I don't know the answer to that. He's also a very easy conversation around a, a very in-depth topic that he knows really well that you may not know well, and he makes you feel good about it, right? So I think that 
you know, it boiled down to we went through a, a, a deep and detailed interview process, had some great candidates, some good people. Uh, there are great coaches around this game, no question. And uh, when we when we got a chance to spend more and more time with Rocco, we realized that this was a guy who wanted to grow, you know, who wanted to continue to develop, who knew he was going to make mistakes as a coach and as a manager, and that he knew there was an, this was the kind of environment that would help him and support him through that. I think if we're not making mistakes, we're probably not trying hard enough to do some things a little bit more aggressively or, or challenge some things. So I you know, it felt really comfortable. I, you know, it's felt comfortable since day one. We've, had, we've talked every day, probably since he's been hired and that's been a good, a good start for us. Were you looking for something specific or were you looking for the right person? Yeah, it's a good question. I think we were looking for something, you know, I wrote up a, a, a list of kind of key attributes that I thought, you know, after we had started the process was what were we, were we looking for? And I got to the end of the list and I'll admit, you know, this is, I, I looked at it and I said, there's not a lot of specific baseball stuff on this list initially. It was more about how they wanted to focus on development of players. And, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a breakdown of something around lineup management or otherwise. It was much more about the big picture elements of what it means to manage and lead a ball club. And as we got deeper into that, uh, we, really, we built out the sub-bullet points that really did adapt a lot of the more nuanced baseball side of things. And when we went through our process, we, we tried to, as best we could, kind of objectively grade every candidate relative to some of these key attributes, really just be as thoughtful in that process as possible. And we got there with Rocco, and he checked you know, just about every box you know, on so many levels. And so I feel like there wasn't one key attribute that he brings that we said, that's it, that's the one thing we want. But there was a clear overall ability that meshed really well with what we thought the twins were about, our culture, you know, what, what matches our market, what matches our fan base, what matches who we think the twins are, an investment in development and people and our culture, and he fits really well. So how do you define your culture, or what do you want it to be? Yeah, that's a, a, another, I mean, we, we talk a lot about um, specifics around that a lot, but you know, we want to be focused on developing a good process, our people, and that process and people lead to a good culture. And you know, my, my view of that is we all want to win. Right, the World Series. We're looking at the trophy. That's the prize. That's in the windshield. But you do that by way of focusing on um, what I deem a, an excellent process. You know, and, and focus on the ev- what you can control every day. And you know, there's an element to open mindedness and collaboration that I know. You know, I've said a number of times uh, that sometimes gets poked fun at. But I think that's really important. I think it's understanding that your player development and your scouting groups have to work together to develop the players. That your major league staff and some of your analysts and some of your strength coaches. And then your performance psychology folks are all working together to try and figure out the best plan for a player on that roster. And so our culture is defined by you know, a very flat environment that in- engages a number of different people. We want the best answers, the best results. Uh, we don't care where they come from, right? And that, that's, that's the way we live and breathe, and that's the way we're going to operate every day. Are you jealous that Dad could have said all that with a lot bigger words? No doubt about it. Oh, no doubt about it. And half the time, I, I usually keep the dictionary to my right, so I can look up a few of those words as we go. He's he's impressive with the English language. Uh, he is. Uh, let Let's go big picture here now, because you know I dealt with this with Andy. I dealt with this with Terry. The Twins are not going to be the dominant team in Major League Baseball year after year after year. You're going to kind of sure. have windows where you have a chance, and you have windows where you kind of regroup. How do you? As a still a relatively new, you know, leader in the organization, how do you deal with the combination of? I'm going to keep this as broad as possible, so you can go wherever you want. Time timetables, mm-hmm. pressure to win, uh, and the the ever popular, if misguided, notion that you guys just don't spend any money. Right, right. Well, it's a you could take that in a number of different directions. Right, I, I think that for us. Our view of building, we've talked about sustainable winning, and, and you're right, Jim, there are some ebbs and flows to seasons, certainly, if you look over the last you know, 20 to 30 years of baseball, and no team has sustained winning through all of those years, right? So you're going to have some years that go well, um, some that don't go quite as well. But I, I guess I view it this way, and this is a really simple way of looking at it, is always do what I consider good baseball deals, right? Which and, and evaluate your current circumstances and your current environment and make the best baseball deal you can at that time. There are going to be moments where we feel like we're a little bit behind the pack and we're going to have to invest either in the now to catch up or in the future. And typically chasing the now can sometimes get you in you know, a little bit of trouble if it's the wrong time to do that, you know, say at different trade deadlines or, or times when you, know, you don't feel you're in the best possible position. So, you, so at that time, you have to invest in the future. But I think 
my commitment and our commitment as an organization to this fan base is we're going to invest in either one or the other, right? We're not going to, you can get yourself in trouble in baseball by riding the fence for a long period of time because you end up somewhere in the middle and the middle is not where you want to be. You want to either be building for the future or building for the present. And I feel like for us over the last uh, couple of seasons, you know, we came here at the end of 2016, we said that we felt this team had a core of talent, some good young players, and we still feel that way. And 2017 worked out in a way where a lot of things aligned, you know, the stars aligned, a lot of good things started to happen through the course of that year. 2018, we kind of had the opposite of reality is 